that's odd. She acted as though she'd never seen a person's demon before. Come on, Pan. In Lyra's world, which is a parallel universe to our own, you're never alone. You always have this companion for life who is every other facet of you. Look, Pan. It says I mustn't let Mrs. Coulter get hold of it, or we'll all die. Everybody has this animal, a demon, which represents their inner person, who they are. <laughs> Who's she? People can talk with their demons. Don't know. But she shut up the master, all right? Nobody else really notices it. And they understand each other completely. As a child, your demon is able to take whatever form it wants to. So Pan, Pantalaimon, who is Lyra's demon, is able to change into all kinds of shapes. He's not constantly changing. It depends on, like, what whatever her mood is and how she's feeling. I will not have my niece slithering round like an alley cat. Behave yourself. Yeah! Pan really is the mirror, you know, they're the mirror image of, of Lyra. Um, I think having a demon is like, instead of wearing, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve, it's your heart walking side by side by you. Pan, it's her. She's running the gobblers. We've got to get out of here. I think the demon is the voice inside your head, your sort of gut feeling, saying, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. And that's what the demons are, except they just express it out loud and they're visible, they're out there. When you get to puberty, when you sort of become, a, become an adult, it, it fixes shape, and that's the person you are. Lord Asriel has a snow leopard, and that's who his inner self is. The worst thing that could happen is that someone would take your demon away from you. And the most terrifying thing would be to see a human being without their demon because it would be as though it would be like seeing somebody without their head. However you feel, your demon feels, and if it gets hurt, then you feel the pain that, that it feels as well. Let her go! And if you get hurt, then it feels the pain that you feel. If you do not obey me, you will have an argument which I will win. <laughs> Don't! Mrs. Coulter's demon is a golden monkey. And like Mrs. Coulter, that you know, the monkey is, is glossy and sleek and beautiful on the outside, um, but also manifests her rage and um, malice. It's not a pet. If it was a dog, you'd say, go and sit over there. Or you'd say, sit down or come here, or, let me give you. It's not a pet. It's you. It will follow you and it will do it, your movements and it will feel what you feel. I do beg pardon. Lee Scoresby. This old gal is Hester. I've come to be quite in touch with my Hester. Oh, Lord. Lee, when are you going to learn to mind your own business? Right again, Hester. Cut. Got again. It? it demands patience and ingenuity on the part of an actor has to act with someone or something that isn't there. Well, John. A kid has many advantages because they're closer to the time when they played with imaginary animals. People look a little longer through there. Whatever disadvantages came from Dakota not having been in a film before were far outweighed by the fact that her powers of imagination were still pretty active. Will you concentrate? Cut. Any CGI movie requires you to think about two movies at once, which is kind of the movie that's going to be laid on top of the live action movie that you're making. And, you know, we have some of the best special effects guys in the world who are going to figure that out. Let's try to keep the background clear. Yeah. The reference. Right. Nicole holding the golden monkey, she needs to know how much it weighs and about how big the, the where the head's gonna fall and all those kind of things. So she'll be sitting there either either holding this green uh, sock or, or pantomiming in the air, and we have to make sure that we can squeeze our guy in there and it makes sense. You know, when you go to drama school, they, you do all these classes in mime where you pretend, you know, to be patting a dog or you pretend to be. Um, finding the walls and picking up a teacup and drinking tea, and this, it's all imaginary. Um, so it's a, it certainly is useful. I tell any actor, <laughs> don't skip those mime classes. The ferry is about to go. The screen is going to be filled with these animals, but these animals are not going to behave as animals. They're going to behave as the humans are behaving on screen. And I think that's going to be a fascinating process, how they get that right and how they make that. But, you know, like I said, I've got a snow leopard sitting next to me purring. It's just... I'm, I'm fine. <laughs>